call the meeting to order at what time we got? I got 6.18. All right. Call the meeting to order at 6.18 p.m. Okay. Um, here, let me just move these minutes up. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, last meeting's minutes, uh, actual meeting was September 20th. Um, Tim has noted a couple errors. Um, definitely, I typed this in a fugue state. So, with the chief has been on parental chief, um, I've changed to with the chief out on parental leave. Um, and then he also noted on towards the end, um, this would amount to it should read 714,000 to 1,144,000. I dropped the trailing zeros there, um, which I just said is only an order of magnitude off, so I don't know what the big deal is. But <laughs> um, So I, I'll make those um, changes to the minutes. Um, otherwise, if anybody has any other changes or would like to make a motion for accepting them. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second. Um, All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's as amended. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so getting right into it. Uh, this seems really long for some reason. It's like three times longer than my normal, but um, we've got our year end stats. Uh, so our preamble to the meeting, we already talked about that. Uh, that 1,200, that 1,216 <coughs> calls <coughs> represents. Um, 1,216 medical patients. So our actual calls <coughs> for service were slightly higher than that. Um, generally, any time that we are dispatched, we generate a call on our end, um, but there may be a three or four that we missed that like dispatched mutual aid to Greenfield canceled before we even got out of bed type thing. Um, so I always qualify that as patient responses. Uh, we also got the numbers from Shepherd Control about our mutual aid responses countywide, and we've been talking about this as mutual aid is an ongoing problem in the county um, in that it's not really as mutual as it ought to be. And one of the ways I, I looked at that was for every mutual aid response that we receive, so every time that we are unable to respond to a patient, this might be five patients at a car accident scene or three simultaneous calls, that type of thing. For every mutual aid response we received from another community, we provided 2.15 responses. So over twice as many times we've gone out and provided mutual aid to other communities who weren't able to meet um, their obligations. Do you feel like this trend is gonna keep going? I think... Um, or was that because of like, is this one that incorporated the um, when AMR and Greenfield had issues and so I think I, I pulled AMR out here because they are are depending on where our call is located whether it be in Old Deerfield South Deerfield Waitley or Sunderland our mutual aid running order differs so if we need another ambulance in Sunderland we're going to request Amherst first um, if it's in Waitley we're going to request Northampton first AMR though is primary mutual aid for all of Deerfield. So Old Deerfield and South Deerfield, and Deerfield represents the majority of our calls. So that is, that is our primary mutual aid um, partner, and they have repeatedly let us down. We routinely will request them mutual aid and they are just not available. Um, and that's why I pulled their statistic out. This number, for every one mutual aid response they received in, they provided 0 0.25 out, um, so a quarter of the actual ones. That is countywide, so I'm able to look at the whole county stats on that. Um, I did not pull that out. I didn't have the time to get into the statistics and see how it was us um, directly, but I imagine it, my gut tells me it's going to be close to that. I think, um, I think this is like status quo. I, I think that we, just based on what AMR is, a for-profit medical company, there is no incentive there for them to be available more often. Um, and so I don't ever anticipate our relationship with mutual aid with them ever being truly mutual. Um, I know that there was, we had talked about 
the town of Gill previously, and AMR was in negotiations with Gill, and I don't know where that landed. I, I heard rumor that those negotiations broke down, um, but it's, it's more evidence of just there's this dearth of EMS availability in the county total, and by nature of us kind of having our act together <laughs> um, means that when somebody needs mutual aid, even if we're not first or second or third on their list, they will eventually get to us and we will be available because we are taking pains to make sure that we are available. Um, are we collecting on these mutual aids? I mean, I, yes. I don't have a problem for us running mutual aid, but you know, at some point you gotta make sure we're yeah. actually collecting. Yeah, and I think... Because um, the demographics here, yeah. that we have private insurance and that offsets the Medicare runs. But our, our mutual aids, are we doing too, you know, are they mostly Medicare runs? I, are they private insurance runs? Because the demographics north of us are not as favorable as they are in Deerfield. So when we, when we cracked over that 1,100 calls a year mark, we, we had to really assure that we had that other truck during the day, those two trucks on duty right. during the day. and. I've explained this before, but like if one ambulance is this much capacity, a second ambulance is this much capacity. So if your call volume comes here and you add that second ambulance, you have this additional capacity in your system. And I think right now we have that additional capacity <coughs> during the day. So we are able, not only are we able to respond to these mutual aid calls or intercept calls, but we receive revenue from it. So that is revenue that we wouldn't get otherwise and we're already paying for the crew to be on. So that's really, I don't want to use the term free money, right? But it's, it's money available to us that we're not having to spend any more money to achieve. And it maintains a level of um, action or engagement with the staff. So it prevents them from atrophying their skills and things like oh, no. that. So I, I think, I think right now, I, I think we're fine. I, I think we're fine as long as we're committing to having that second truck on during the day. Um, if And the mutual aid calls are not significant overnight just because that's we have a precipitous drop off of medical calls kind of in general in the overnight because of the type of communities that we are. Um, I think if we start seeing an uptick in mutual aids in the overnight hours when we only do have that one ambulance available, that's when we're gonna start having some more difficult conversations, but I don't think we're there yet. And so what do you anticipate is our capacity? So we still have, now that we're up to 1216, so we're edging up over the 1100. What, when is it the next, I mean, do you, is it like 1400, 1500 is when we have to make a decision on a, a third truck? I think that feels about right. It's hard mm -hmm. to say. I think time of day is going to play a major role. And so, Assuming that the dispersion of calls is like s remains the same, right? Our call volume during the day is going to go up as well as our call volume at night. Um, I my gut tells me the next the next big move we're going to have to be is going to be a big bite, which would going to be like two trucks twenty four seven. I don't think that's going to be you know in we're twelve not. or twenty four months, but I think that is the next. That is the next growth step um, that we're going to encumber, and I think that is going to be, like I said, a significant bite. And I think when that happens, whether it be three years from now, four or five years from now, well, uh, the trend is we're gonna we have yeah. we have another, I think, twenty four months before, you know, if you were projecting based on something that you did generated not yeah. too long ago, we we were getting to that add the second truck yeah not i think it was well the pandemic made it a little yes, bit right. odd but i think it was like in the last year or so so and then the projection if i'm trying to remember that chart wasn't for another two or three years yeah which makes sense in what you're saying yeah and i think too if those conversations in two or three years time coincide with conversations about other communities you know, like it, yes, our budget might, I don't know, grow by 70 or 60%, but 
if you're splitting the assessment four ways instead of three, you know, they might only go. So like, and then you've got the, the, the revenue offsets of that. So it's really, it's a difficult calculation to make. Um, and, and I've got like spreadsheets where I can like do hypotheticals and it's never intuitive. You have to do the math to kind of see where the dust settles on it. Do you think that um, the EMS situation in Franklin County is gonna change much in the next two or three years? Only in that communities are gonna have to put their money where their mouth is. Um, do you think the, the North, uh, you know, Northfield, Boniston, that group is doing, is trying to do what we did? Yeah. So you think North County is gonna to get together? I think, I think regionalization has proven to be a very smart move. Um, and I know Northfield is already, I mean, I can't speak for them specifically, but they're already contracting to provide services to Berniston. They are kind of de facto responding to Gill as well. I think, I think the climate up there, the situation up there is ripe for regionalization. I, I don't know where the dust is gonna set on that because we're all just a bunch of personalities. Um, West County, Colerain um, EMS Ambulance is, uh, you know, they are the ALS provider out in West County. So again, you have lots of personalities out there, Charlemont, Heath, Holly, far-flung communities. And so, you know, if there's going to be a push for more regionalized service, I think you've got kind of an obvious nexus for that up there already, but um, I don't know. I, I think, I, you know, relying on AMR to be I know, so. generous you know like the, I and I've said this before like I'm not holding <coughs> it against them but they are like legally required to do what's in the best interest of their shareholders right and so what's in the best interest of their shareholders is not to just be available in case you know Charlemont needs an ambulance you know their interest is is those medical discharges and things like that. Is so. AMR contracted by the town of Greenfield or is it with the hospital? Greenfield. Uh, Greenfield, and I believe they have a contract with Turner's, and this is part of, I think, there, we had one, we actually had a multi-car accident out here. It was something like seven patients or eight patients. Um, at South County, our providers responded incredibly professionally, smart, um, got resources rolling immediately. Their first call was to AMR for additional ambulances, and AMR said that they weren't available. Um, we ended up getting Northampton and Amherst. So it was Northampton, Amherst, and South County. We treated all the patients. And I believe what happened is, it's come to find out, AMR did have a truck available, but their poor dispatcher looked at their contract list into the bulletin board and said, oh, we don't have a contract with Deerfield. We don't respond to Deerfield. And so when Shelburne Control said, we need an ambulance, they went, nope, nope, we don't do Deerfield. Um, Chief Strand, Greenfield Fire, uh, has since assured me that he's gone up one side and down the other of AMR management and said, they are mutual aid partners to us. If you are our ambulance, you are mutual aid partners to them. Um, and made it very clear that um, we scratched their back enough that they could return the favor. I, I wanna clarify, they are required by regulation to respond to a mutual aid request and I, and I don't begrudge a 19 year old dispatcher at AMR in Springfield, you know, just trying to make hay of what's being thrown at them. Um, and, and I don't anticipate that being, you know, like an ongoing issue. Yeah. Or like, it's certainly not an operational policy of mm -hmm. them, but I think it, it is reflective of what happens. In the uh, I, yes. Yeah. Of, of the situation we, we find yeah. ourselves in. Well, and it's kind of what drove us to the model that we've got. The good yeah. news for North County and West County, They've got a couple different models to choose from. Should they choose to regionalize? They've got what we've done. They've got what Hilltown's done. I'm sure there are other people who may have done it. Um, I'm biased. I think we've done it very well for what's been here. But to your point earlier, it was this was not a, a three-month solution. This was years of planning to get and make sure we were well prepared to get to where we've gotten you know, to. There was oh, yeah. meetings. Oh, I know, lots of meetings. Um, yeah, so I think, I, you know, just kind of wrapping that off, this budget, um, you know, includes that one ambulance 24 seven and funding to have per diem staff that second ambulance during the day. That second ambulance being on staff brings with it 
more revenue. Um, so that's basically a wash. We are we are bringing that service with us, um, and it's not costing us out of pocket. Um, but I think, yeah, I, in a few years, the conversation is going to be like, okay, this this one truck a night is not doing us any good because it means you know half of our evening calls are going to mutual aid or something. But we'll we'll talk about that if and when we get there. Um, Nero's law, uh, which is a law required for EMS services to treat and transport. Um, We're really only on the second paragraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, police canines. Um, this was rushed through the legislature without involvement of Department of Public Health. And so we are now up against the regulation taking effect on, I believe it's February 10th, and no plan or protocols in place. The requirements in the law for training cannot be met currently. And so there's a scramble now where technically when the law comes into effect on February 10th, nobody's going to be in compliance and they will be technically out of compliance. Um, so the Western Regional Homeland Security Advisory Council has already um, approved funding to get this training, get these resources. Um, all of the Western Mass EMS uh, departments are working together to get a unified training on this, make sure what's going on. There's a lot of moving pieces. Um, but if you hear about this training, this is what's going on. We're scrambling to meet the requirements. Some of us um, who are getting inspected by the state after February 10th and before this training is av available, we'll, pro we'll get a deficiency on their um, uh, May or June. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we, sh we should be okay. Um, the, the ones that are getting inspected sooner to avoid that deficiency. Now, you get the deficiency, you would simply write, our corrective action plan is once this training is available, which is in the works, we will blah, 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 and it'll get rubber stamped. Um, one of the options is to request a waiver from the state that you cannot meet the requirements of the law because of public safety regions, reasons. And the boilerplate language is that the transport times to an approved emergency vet facility is uh, impracticable. So like- That's not gonna fix for us. Exactly, right? So Sturbridge Fire is like, we can't do this. We can't drive all the way to Deerfield. Our ambulance is gonna be out of service for four hours. And meanwhile, I can throw a rock and hit the emergency vet. So, so, and I'm all for this law. Um, but if you hear about it, that's that's the pickle we're in right now. Everybody's working on it. Uh, I, we did vote for it on Homeland Security, so yeah. it is it is working. So, through. have you been in touch with the emergency vet? The DPH is because okay. the requirements of this law is that the you have basically an emergency vet medical control doctor. And there's like two in the state that are willing to like do this. And then they have to be included in the training. So they're like, I have no time to teach classes to how many like EMTs yeah. and paramedics. So that's part of the moving pieces. Okay. They have been identified by DPH as a facility. So they are willing to okay. do that. Um, Work with us. Yeah. This is also one of those things that like we would have done and had been doing quietly. And then once they like made a law yeah. about it, now we're like scrambling. I'm all, I'm all for doing it and doing what yeah. we can to help. I think the other ones to include in this are state police and the local police who have got canines so that they're aware of here's what the training is, here's what we're being told. I don't want to get in a pissing match with you when your dog is injured because this is how we've been told yeah. we need to handle it. Yeah. Um, they are, they, they, not only are they heavily involved, they are required by law to be involved in the training. Perfect. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, there's a thing called First Amendment audits. Uh, if you're not familiar, it's uh, people on YouTube who go to municipal offices and usually police departments um, and demand access to records that they would have access to through a FOIA or speak to people that are normally um, public. Uh, and it's the purpose of these First Amendment audits are to catch municipal employees um, off guard, they don't know what's going on, and then basically get their rights denied. Um, they're making their rounds again. They went up to um, Colerain to drop by the municipal offices, which were closed that day, and next door was the fire department. They were having a drill day, and so they just moseyed over. Um, I said it was like an incident of opportunity. Um, and uh, Lisa Mead, town council, 
um, has provided her law firm, law firm provided a document to the town employees about what to do, how to behave, um, and that's been shared with our staff. Everybody's up to speed. Everybody feels very comfortable with it. Um, we're thankfully not being a law enforcement agency and being you know, understood that our records are private. Um, we're not a, a, a very big threat here, but um, we've been briefed um, and our facility thankfully is secured. Um, we put in all these electronic locks and things like that. So um, just as a matter of operation, when somebody visits, they don't have free access anyway. So we're in a good position for that if you hear anything. I think they even came by Deer, Deerfield PD or something and it was basically a big nothing burger. You know, because very professional, handled it smartly, knew knew what to anticipate. So, um, so there's that. Uh, David Zamoyski, our advanced EMT on staff, CPR trainer, recently completed uh, certification training with the senior center staff. There was some coordination that had to happen there. I think that had been pending for a few months um, over the holiday season, but was able to accommodate accommodate that. Um, there was a question about whether or not. South County EMS can act as a training or certification body for our other municipal departments and sister agencies. Um, there, I'm still doing some research on this. Um, the short answer is most likely cost prohibitive. Very recently, Amherst College Police Department looked into this very same thing. They said, we have to certify as first responders every single, every two or three year cycle, CPRs every two years, can we do it in house? Um, and their research that they put together in their report was the cost for training up the instructors, maintaining their instructor certification, the equipment, and then also maintaining um, a training site location that has requirements through the American Heart Association for record retention and facilities and things like that um, was more than contracting with an organization that just does that full time. Um, and to put it in, in context, like David is a CPR instructor, but we still we still contract South County EMS with Community 911 because they are a training center, they have the equipment, and they can do everybody, you know, on a rolling basis, they can maintain those records and things like that. So, um, that, uh, the reason why I asked you to do that is because um, there's two fire departments um, in Deerfield, there's Waitley and Sunderland Fire Department, so that's four, plus the um, four or three police departments, so that's seven agencies. Yeah. So if you took the cost of seven agencies, is it cheaper for us to do it in house, and is that something that we can take on? And I, I understand what you know Amherst College is saying well we only are going to do us but we do have seven agencies that do need to be certified so if you multiply that out it seems to be that it would be a good expenditure that yeah. none of our agencies would have to end up doing um, yeah like I said I'm still crunching the numbers on this um, the Massachusetts general law requires that all police officers and firefighters remain as certified first responders the Municipal Police Training Council, the MPTC, as part of their in-service training for all police officers in the state, incorporate first responder recertification. So all the police officers, as they do their in-service that's required, they receive modules, and at the end of three years, they get their certification. Um, the fire departments um, are required, have always been required. Um, so my question is, you know, like, Where's everybody else getting it? Have they not been doing it and now like they've lost that avenue? And what was that? Do they have somebody in house or whatever? Or is there, does Department of Fire Service offer? Like, so those, those are also the other questions. Um, I, I'm going to keep looking into this um, and, and put do together you, some sort of report. Do you know what Waitley's doing offhand? The last time we did it was with the police department. The Sergeant Bates actually taught the class. So he must be certified. Yeah, he might be an MPTC instructor, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know MPTC, they maintain a training center and they have <clears throat> staff for training records and stuff like that. So, it, I mean, it would seem like, well, if everybody needs to do it right, like how do we get these departments together and just get on the well, same schedule, right? I was just going to say, if, if everybody needs to get it done and you have 
you know, seven agencies, the cost, you multiply that by seven, and it's got to be, and you're all working with volunteers, so you're doing a, a large number of people. So it's got to be cheaper if we do it. And that would, to me, would be a good service for, you know, our EMS to do. Um, I know, you know, convert, one of the things we're funding is, you know, participation with the, you know, the task force. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what's the cost of participating in the task force versus the cost of this? Mm -hmm. If this makes more sense and mm -hmm. more service for this should be then the focus of our, you know, your community activity. Efforts, yeah. Yeah. So if you can get the numbers. Yeah. Because I, would I still. Would it be worth adding in, like, being the outside source for, like, Amherst College or some of them other places? Or we could that, do generate. Well, the problem with that is then you're generating, you're generating a revenue stream, there's no question, because you would charge them, whereas our agencies would be free, right. obviously. But um, wh what is the liability? My concern would be the liability of record keeping and, yeah. you know, if you right. can transfer it to, if Amherst College pays Zach to, or Z to do this kind of training and he does it and we just collect the check, that's fine. But my concern would be the liability of us maintaining the records of who came and then if... And if they screw up somewhere. Yeah, well, I mean, you'd be, you'd be teaching to another accreditation body. So the American Heart Association, American Red Cross, they would have their requirements for record keeping. We would, you know, they would reserve the right to audit us and things like that. I, there's a lot of moving pieces there. Um, like I said, like, there's enough moving pieces there that it's more cost effective for us to contract another agency to do that for us instead of trying, to, and in fact, in our early days, we had a major issue um, with a previous employee who had been uh, tasked with exactly this, and it, it, we got a deficiency on our inspection because um, it wasn't. That's it, why yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be too excited about doing it other than for ourselves, because it would be, I think it would be a huge liability for the little bit of money that we might. I'll keep crunching, I'll, I'll keep putting some, okay. I'll put some of them together and figure out exactly what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Is if you get something together, depending what the numbers look like, is there an opportunity to potentially get a sponsorship from a nonprofit in town or maybe a, a, a business up the road in town or, you know, somebody who, you know, might come across and say, hey, we'll give you X number of dollars to do this to cover the cost. Um, well, if our fire departments are doing it, we legitimately could go to businesses and say, we would like you to sponsor this training. Um, and it's the same as the fire department up in Old Deerfield. We could go to the nonprofits and say, listen, our fire, you know, our guys need to be trained. Yeah. And, and so we would appreciate this extra support. <coughs> so it's, it's, I mean, you could do it all kinds of ways. Sure. I, well, the thing is, with, with for Z to find out is how much it's going to cost us to to set this up. Then how many people are we talking about? Right. And and how would we set up the training? And then I again, you want you want to make sure your record keeping is one hundred percent. There's part of me that likes training. Pick on my my other half, my better half at Pelican. You know. To be able to go over there and train her employees would be great because then they get to know our paramedics and EMTs, and there's a level of a little bit of trust that gets built early on. Um, but on the flip side, I don't want to short staff us to get in the business of being out training. Which the only other thing thought I've got is, you know, does is David interested in continuing doing that in the future? Uh, we're expecting that he's retiring in the very near future, um, so he will not be available to us. And I don't know, you know, like I don't know that we have any other. I'm trying to think of what instructors we have on hand. I'm an instructor, but in things like advanced cardiac life support, pre-hospital traumatic life support, so like not CPR, not first responder. Um, so we would have to, we would have to recruit from within to find somebody who's willing to get that instructor credential. We would have to 
send them to get that instructor credential, and then we would have to um, backfill their hours when they're when they're doing that. If not, does it? Is there an opportunity to work out some type of a contract or relationship with Community Nine One One, where town members come to us looking for it? We'll call them. They provide the service at at a discount, a or like discount, or some type of predetermined rate based on class size, whatever it is. Like a referral thing. Yeah. So instead of doing it at your street rate of you know seventy five dollars a person, would he do it for I don't know fifty dollars a person? Right. And yeah, you yeah. know you can we can wrap it and bundle it any way we yeah. need to to say. Well, I mean, there there might be something there. I, you know, David is an instructor with Community Nine One One, so when he you know did this for the senior center. Mm -hmm. He was over there as a South County employee, but those certifications went through Community 911 Training Center, and you know they're maintaining the records and things like that. So, yeah, so there might be some sort of um, arrangement there. Okay. Could you? Is there any possibility you can get back to me? Uh, because I know Old Deerfield is very interested. I mean, they it's not in their budget to pay for everybody to get. Uh, I have, I'm withholding comment on one thing there. The other thing is I've reached out to the fire chief in Old Deerfield oh. already and um, he, he wasn't, uh, I reached out last week after our conversation um, and he promised he would get back to me and we would have a conversation about it. Oh, so perfect. that just hasn't happened yet, um, but yeah. I, I even wanted to make sure that we were talking about the same stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. We started a new um, schedule rotation on January 1st. When we, when the department was first formed, we had a rotating schedule, um, and then we went to a fixed schedule. Now that we have more staff on and we're covering those additional hours and things like that, we went back to a rotating schedule. Um, and it's, it's very simply 40 hours in seven days, so there's no like automatic or usual overtime that's encumbered or anything like that. Um, and it's a five-week rotation, um, and it's one, uh, this was decided on and presented by a group of the full-timers and voted on by the full staff, but some really amazing things have already started happening. So because they, all the staff members are rotating around one another now, um, some opportunities for some um, organic like subcommittees and um, collaborations are already occurring. I walked in on a group uh, of three people earlier in the week or I guess late last week, uh, excitedly setting up a, a, a CQI meeting every five weeks when their shifts overlap so they could touch base and do trending through the department and work on stuff like that. So um, I, I'm, like, I'm super excited about this. Uh, it's going to give an opportunity to for um, those additional duties as we're like people are taking on more responsibilities because of that overlap everybody hits everybody else in the department over those five weeks. Um, so if there's conversations that want to occur or things like that, then we're able to facilitate that um, uh, much better. I think this is going to be a wicked bad budget year. So, I mean, I already brought this up with you that one of the things for all of us, if you, if there's any way, could you just, um, I think we should set up because this is no budget season. I, sh I think we need to meet next month and not wait, you know, for two months. But it would be good to get feedback on this rotation as far as what's it doing to the budget for overtime. Zach went through the numbers, he, you know, it seemed very really reasonable, but I look at, at our overall budget, one of the th places that hopefully we can cut back on a little is the overtime. Yeah, uh, and, and we'll talk about overtime when we get to the budget. The, the rotation, works out well because it's rotating and we have this overlap. When we have somebody who's out for an extended period, so we just had somebody leave on parental leave, um, and his shifts every week, so we've got a 40 hour a week hole that we need to fill, but in reality, because they're rotating around, it's anywhere between like 24 and 32 hours of coverage that we need because they were you know additional staff in in spots and the other people that are on those additional slots can now slide in 
to fill his slots. And every week, the people that are in a position to change is different. So we're not burdening certain people. So morale is higher. There's a wider opportunity for sliding and kind of getting cute with stuff. Um, so we've already seen just, I mean, it's January 17th, just in the first two and a half weeks of this month, um, we've seen this in action where historically we would have had to gone to overtime. We were able to, hey, I need you to come in two hours earlier instead of at nine, come in at seven. And then we avoided the overtime because of this this rotation okay. and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so yeah. that's great. Okay. <coughs> uh, talked about that. Um, oh, and um, I think I touched on this earlier too, kind of like defining roles. So like ALS coordinator is a role in the organization, um, but we don't have a definition for what coordinator is. So starting to like nail this stuff to the wall and say a coordinator has a purview over making sure department policies and procedures are being followed and making recommendations to changes to the policies and procedures. And so then being able to, and, and part of my goal is to have everybody's headshot on the wall and their certifications and stuff, to be able to say like, hey, I have this, I have an ALS coordinator position, is that something that you think you want to try? And even though like, you know, it's not an appointed position with additional money, but at least we can say, you know, Tim Drumgoal, ALS coordinator, and it's something that he can be proud of, the department can be proud of, and kind of working on that individual, uh, personal, and career growth stuff. So that's super exciting. Um, I mention that because you may start hearing me refer to people as, you know, whatever, CQI leader, Alicia Toya, or ALS coordinator, Tim Drumgoal. Those, those are what those, those titles are gonna represent. Um, and then we kind of get, we're getting into the budget stuff here. Um, the equipment, uh, let me sum this up. We have two cardiac monitors. They were purchased in 2014 as part of the grant we received for regionalization. So they are eight years old now. They're basically 10 year life cycle on cardiac monitors. Um, and the cardiac monitor, in our case, we use the LifePak 15 from Physio Control. Um, without that, you can't do paramedic stuff. That is what we read the cardiac rhythms with. That's what we deliver the electricity with. Um, that's what we do 12 lead interpretations with. And our units specifically were of a generation of LifePak 15, which are no longer serviceable should a very specific part fail. So the main motherboard in that device um, is no longer available. Uh, there was some sort of, uh, it was, whatever the chemicals they used to make it was a harmful process for the environment. So they switched vendors for that circuit board, but it meant re-engineering the inside of the device. Um, so those circuit boards are not available anymore. So I, our, our physio rep is like, you're on borrowed time here. You know, if and when this thing gives it the go, it might never, but if it does, there's no repairing it. Um, so thinking about that, they're eight years old. We think about a typical 10 year life cycle. If one of these goes down, we won't be able to repair it. Um, and we have three ambulances. We are a two ambulance service. So you need that third ambulance to be a two ambulance service through whatever, um, maintenance, things like that, downtime. The thing that's keeping that third ambulance from being at the paramedic level, right now it is only at the EMT basic level, is a cardiac monitor. That, that device, which costs close to $50,000, $46,000, is the cost prohibitive part. Everything else that makes an ambulance an ALS ambulance is pennies compared to that. That third ambulance is also what we do our um, sports standbys with, so our football games. Uh, if anybody watched the news recently of a football player who was struck on the field and it was a paramedic crew that saved his life on the field. Um, so the importance of having paramedics available for these things. Um, I say this because as we're thinking about replacing these devices, if we are able to replace at least one, I shouldn't say replace, I should say add to our cash of two to get three, we would be able to have three ALS trucks in service. And in that way, if we do lose one and we can't repair it um, or something like that, we're not down to one paramedic mm -hmm. truck. Um, so that 
that would be uh, the last quote. Paramedic um, McComb is applying for the AFG um, uh, assistance to firefighting grant through FEMA right now. One of the requests in that is a micro grant for a cardiac monitor. Um, we have a decent shot at it, but it is a long shot. Um, so we are trying to find funding streams for this outside of just retained earnings or, or, or things like that. Um, but that is one of the things on the more immediate did capital you, replacement. Did you put that a capital request in for the 50000 I haven't put any capital requests in yet because I need to get, I mean, we haven't met since what, September, right? So I need, I need the oh. boo to be like, yes, this is, our, this is our strategy moving forward as far as the FY24 budget goes, and I'll start getting these things in. Um, if we do, um, that would be even just in the very least pending grant receipt, and if not, then we're not going to buy it, that type of thing? Well, I'm on the Capital Improvement Committee, so I would suggest that you put in, um, I'm not a voting member here, but I would suggest that we put in for at least one life pack this year, and then one for next year. And then um, we have to talk about the ambulance. Yeah, yeah. So I, th I think... You know, we, we have been setting aside the 50000 This was the year um, to get the ambulance replacement. It is now because of COVID and the, you know, delivery systems, it's like, what did you say, 14 to 18 months out? Yeah. Plus, plus it's... Uh, longer, I think. I heard an estimate, it was a few months ago, but it was up over 700 days. Oh. Yeah. Well, then... It's not only that, but then it's 360000 which is not, we have been working off of, we were like 210 and so we upped it to 250 anticipating yep. that we would be, have our 250 in the bank, which we do. Which we do, as of FY24, so we've been putting away $62,500 a year, um, so that would be $250,000 every four years. Um, and that was so the oldest truck in our fleet was never older than 12 years. Um, currently, the oldest truck in our fleet is a 2007. So 15 years, 15 years old. 16 now, and we're in 23. Yeah, and that was probably purchased in 2006 as a 2007 model year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that truck is... Um, that's the one that when the state inspector, they get on a creeper underneath looking for frame cracks because they're like, I, like, I pull these out of service all the time. Like I just, just this age and that um, generation. Um, so yes, I, according to our normal replacement schedule, that truck would be getting replaced in FY24. We would have had enough money from retained earnings, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The last, and this is state bid, um, price for the exact same ambulance that cost us $250,000, whatever, three years ago, is up to $363,000. Um, there was no way for us to prepare for this. Nobody is prepared for this. Um, well, I, I think you need to put it in for, I would recommend us to, to have Zach put it in as this year as a replacement based on the 20, you know, more, uh, what do you say, almost 24 months replacement, yeah. plus 363,000 versus 250. So we've got, just put it in, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it on the finance committee level, on the municipal level, and the capital improvement level. What, um, and is it uh, time to talk about raising the uh, retained earnings? Yes, we're going to have yearly. to. Yeah, but, I, mean, I mean, we have to. Right? I, I, and I think yeah. that... Well, I, so, I've got 100000 basically. I know. It's, like, painful, right? Um, I think... So we had the question... When we replaced the International so quickly, the question was, like, we're stacking these replacements, <laughs> right? If we keep doing this, I think... If and when we replace that third truck, we've bought ourselves some time. I think we don't need to replace one in four years. Um, so the question is... Yeah, but all the other equipment... So the equipment, um, do we, you know, these other things, like the other life packs, you know, do we replace the life packs in between and then stack ambulances and then life packs or like what? I don't know. We're, we're, getting, we're getting the history. Yeah. 
I mean, when we built this thing, we didn't think about we got to replace life packs at some point. You know, now we're at the point we got to replace them. So now that we're getting that history, probably need to chart out over the next 20, 25 well, years. The capital improvement is a five year plan. So you need to give us a five year plan of what you need to replace both ambulances, life yes. pack, whatever. Um, I have a draft five year plan, but it wasn't ready for prime time right now. So that's why it hasn't been. And I would take that five year and stretch it. Five years, what they want. Let's look at 10. 10, 15, we, we could look 20, at 10 or 15, yes. Because or where we expect it to start repeating anyway. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? I'm, and I'm now on the finance committee, but I would rather retain the earnings. And I, people call it a war chest. It's not a war chest. You're building up for future expenses. And if we can do it on a steady basis so that we've got the, because we know everything's going up. Unfortunately, the ambulance had that jumped just, a that crazy a that we don't know. But that was a post-COVID thing. Right. Everything. I mean, that's no different than the library. Or and if else. there's if there's an opportunity, and I know the fire departments have done this in the past. You know, hey, we're going to buy a ladder truck in two years. So when you spec your new truck, if we could kind of sit with you and spec that, and you use it as a demo, and when you're done demoing it, you know, come back and sell it to us at a discount. I don't know if that's allowed by state bid law or anything, but you know. Um, Maybe something like that. The, I, I'm happy to, oh, and so the other thing too is the AFG grant that um, Lori is putting in for um, also is for the ambulance. The AFG grant is a huge sum of money, hundreds of millions of dollars. A small percentage of that is earmarked for EMS third services like us, municipal EMS services. And a small percentage of that will go to vehicles. Now, what we don't know is whether it's such a small percentage because there are very few EMS third services applying and we're actually getting, you know, an equivalent ratio of monies or whether it is because they're just like, well, here's some crumbs. Um, she's been working very, very close with our FEMA rep down in DC um, to be like, how do I apply for this? What are we looking at? The answers are, of everybody who's in the running for this, you are in a very good position. You are regionalized. You have a plan for this. You don't have a funding stream for this other than just you know taxation, basically, and, and coming up with this money from the pockets of people. And, and Lori's done a very good job articulating. But getting money for an ambulance replacement is an incredible long shot to begin with. So we're in a good running for an incredible long shot. Um, if that comes through, then great. Somebody made just one, one point three billion. I'll write them a letter. Yeah. Have a long shot. Um, so. so that's the other thing. So I, I'm happy. The the reason I mentioned that is because I'm happy to submit capital <coughs> requests for the monitors and the ambulance. Should the narrative be, look, we have two hundred and fifty. We're short this. It would have to come from raising yeah. an appropriate. Assuming we don't get a grant, in which case, great news type thing. Is that how I would do it? Okay. Yeah. Well, it, we gotta have a starting place. We gotta have um, well, even even if you don't get a grant, if this thing's gonna take two years to build, sure. In two years, we're gonna need it. Yep. And with the life packs, how far <coughs> are the life packs? I thought I read those were like yep. a year out. They're a year out. So again, <coughs> I, I, so yeah. What we would want to know on the capital improvement, let's approve it. Let's worry about trying to make up the difference in the next year, and let's just get our order in. Okay. I mean, we got 250 sitting in the bank. Yeah. And if we got 24 month wait, we got to order it now, and then we'll worry yeah. about how we're going to pay the extra 110. Right. And and going to the, I feel like I mean as a taxpayer in town, if somebody said, "We've raised this much due to unforeseen stuff. We're 110 short. Can we can we scrape together 110?" I'd be like, "Oh yeah, sure." $110 for a $363,000 vehicle that we need? Yeah, no brainer. Um, well, when do you have to pay for the thing? When you put the order in or? No, on delivery. Right, so it's if you're two cheap. years out and you've got 250 in the bank and even if you only did 62,000, you're gonna cover the 363,000 by then. Two, uh, it would be FY26 at that point. Right. Yeah, so 25, July 25. Right. Um, yeah, what and I need clarification on the rules on that. Like, when am I allowed to place an order, based like, 
I know some places have placed an order for a life pack now because they're like, well, for two years out in whatever, 18 months, 24 months, when your life pack is available, you just tell us you don't have the money and we'll give it to the next person. But I don't know whether that's, I don't you think that's appropriate, to, by, right? No, by uh, procurement standards, you gotta have the money approved. That's what so I thought. So if we go to town meeting, yes, okay. we have cap capital stabilization that we could set aside to cover the difference if they delivered it next year okay. instead of two years out. But it would be at town meeting. That's, that's always how we yeah. ordered an ambulance. Yeah. As soon as the vote passed at the three town meetings, I made the phone call and they placed the order or whatever. My, I would at, be advocating for us, because the price is only going to go up, yeah. the 24 month waiting period, which is drastically more than what you had told me before. So. I would rec be recommending to town meeting, let's vote this. If we have to pay the bill a year early, we have capital stabilization yep. ready to go. Um, and we would just vote it out of capital stabilization so we could pay the bill. But on the other hand, we could go through two town meetings with just appropriating 62000 each time versus 50000 mm -hmm, You mm -hmm. know? I mean, well, we, when you say appropriating, I mean, retained earnings is, is within the skims, right? This I, is sitting there right now. Right, right. No, what I mean, I'm saying, if you raise 62 and change it to 80,000, um, that's you just, just more money that you're retaining. Right. We have, in retained earnings, we have $542,054. Right. 250,000 of that is just earmarked for the ambulance, right? right? So it's just the difference is whatever is going back into right. the budget. So in the retained earnings, yeah. you have the money for the, we don't, the stabilization fund doesn't need to provide, I'm just trying to understand this. Well, in other words, you have enough money to pay for one ambulance. Well, because, only because, well, yeah. 284 is going towards the FY24 budget. Oh, I think I, that should say FY24 operating budget um so that money that money will that's going to be spent on services yeah so there there will only be 250 250 and whatever it comes in rolling in the meantime right. basically we try to keep a hundred thousand in in case for some reason our collections are off like say in the pandemic all of a sudden there was no um, calls for a little while. Yeah, we dropped like fifty or sixty thousand dollars in yeah. revenue or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we try to keep like a hundred thousand mm -hmm. there to cover payroll, and when our collections are off. So the set asides every year, that's from revenue from the from the towns, a com combination of what the towns pay and what the um, service brings in. It's all where you measure from, Tim, but basically I estimate revenue mm -hmm. based on the number of calls we anticipate and our average revenue per call. Right. And in this upcoming budget, I'm increasing that number to six $625,000. If in reality we get $650,000 in revenue, that extra $25,000 becomes retained earnings. It's, it's revenue beyond estimated. Also, if we underspend a line item and basically underspend our total budget, that money also rolls over. Um, the idea being, though, if it's just going to be applied to the following fiscal year, then that's that less that we have to raise so it's almost a wash it's like it, it just kind of rolls over and funds itself yeah i was just saying that you know we know we're gonna have to change the ambulance replacement yeah yearly number so where does that come from right it would come from either never increasing the estimated revenue or um Decreasing it. I, I increased it here to a point where I believe we will still get $75,000 above that because that is about what we lost to during the pandemic. Um, and so 
Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I guess the question I'm asking, and probably doing a poor job of asking it, is... Keep asking until I understand. How do you get the FY24 edition to be 80,000 instead of 6250? You, you decrease that number, that 284, by the difference. But you're, what I'm, I guess I'm trying to understand is there is a revenue source for this retained earnings. I mean, it, it's not money we're just inventing. Correct. So it's either we're paying for it as towns or it's revenue that's coming in. Yeah. And you know you have to do it, so how are you going to do it is the question I'm asking. Y you would keep that estimation of, of revenue lower than what you actually bring in. Medical service so fees line estimated. Are talking about? Um, on the back, revenue from service and retained earnings, medical service fees estimated. Okay. And you've got it at six six uh, six hundred and twenty five thousand. I have it at six twenty five. And what do you need to do? You would make it lower than that. I I suspect we will come in somewhere around seven hundred thousand dollars actual okay, so revenue. We'll that's what you're saying. Uh, you're you're relying on services or whatever to generate more money than you're putting in this budget. Yes. So that then you can say it's retained earnings. Correct. Yes. Okay. So it is it's kind revenue of a story you're telling, and it's not reality. You're, you're making you're making an, an educated guess, guess yes. based on past history, but you don't want to you don't want to guess long and come up short. You're right. better to guess short, come up long, because you can take the money that's long mm -hmm. and apply it towards next year. Right. If you look at, um, on the bottom of that same page you're looking at, back in 2021, 20, we actually decreased $27,968 um, for the total, um, the total amount for the service. Oh, when we got rid of the 100,000, wait. I'm trying to figure out which place we're looking at. Down here. Total expenses. Am I looking at the right one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. put okay. this at home so it's yeah, in color. Yeah, it's in color. It's easier to read. Does that mean that Zach Z needs a, a color printer? I have one. I just, you know, I'm just know, trying to know. save money. I know. And I oh. didn't catch it before I printed it, otherwise it'd but be that, black and white. But that decrease was pandemic. Right. Right. There was some pandemic. It's a real decrease. Right. And if you look at, you know, the total appropriated, if we go back further than this, I think when we initially started, we brought the money down, the total appropriated from each town. Um, I think the original assessment was like $380,000 for yeah. Deerfield. So. So I think we might be below what the original assessment still was. Oh, it's definitely, it's certainly lower, and it's lower than even uh, inflation, like it is, yeah. we are net, net lower, yeah. So, okay. Um, but the tough part is every year trying to figure out, and we've sat in this meeting and pushed the numbers around a little bit to try to get to tax rates but for different but, towns when they've needed it. But it's also, it's a mix of your insurance. Because right. if you have private insurance, right. they pay the full thing, yeah, yeah. whereas Medicare... Well, and Medicare rates are going up 6.6%. Right. And Medicare counts for like 40 to 60% of our calls, depending on where we're going. And so, like, you know, you're... I was doing a whole bunch of complicated math, but it means that I think we're going to get an extra like sixty-six thousand dollars in revenue, just from that six point six percent, which is neat. But again, like right, like a pandemic hits and people stop calling nine one one, or we get universal health care and then everybody can just go to a doctor when they need one instead of having to call nine one one, go to the emergency room. You well, know, like they'll all be waiting to get in to see the doctor because they won't be able to get in as quick yeah. as what they want. Um, to, so right, which is which is why I would rather. Be conservative on that revenue estimation, and then oh, yeah. right, and then like I just need yeah. to understand where the yeah. number came from. Yeah, right yeah. So it's it's anticipating that your revenues are going to be higher than what you're telling in the budget story, so that when it is good, it's not a surprise. You sort of know it. And, yeah, and it gives you a place to retain some earnings. And when we in the height of COVID, we our revenue that year was five hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars. 
And so that was down from previous years was like 630, 628. And so it dropped to 575. Now, that was also two or 300 fewer calls a year than we're anticipating, right? It was with the less staff, which means not the intercepts, not the mutual aids, things like that. Um, so I've raised this thinking that even with another COVID, we'd still be, we'd still hit that estimation. So we wouldn't be scrambling. We wouldn't find ourselves in dire straits trying to make payroll. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's also kind of the target that I'm using. Like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So potentially, you're saying that this could be better. I, I would hope it would it be. usually is. To yes. So be. FY24, is that money that, that we're going to be? This is this budget just, year. This whole fiscal year thing is the, the one that starts in June, July 1st? Yes. It's so this fiscal, is money that... Fiscal 24 is June, July 1st. Right, it starts in July 1st. Right. Yes. And that's what we're voting on at town meeting. And it straddles. Right. Yes. Yeah. 24. 23, 24. We're in 23 right, right. now. Right. right. So this further retained earnings number, if you wanted to, you could conceivably start raising it now to prepare people. In other words, 62, 62, 62, 80. Oh, um, yes. Um, right now, we have certified retained earnings available to us, right. 542,000. So we could, yeah, we could make that number anything we wanted. We could right. make that number, you know. 75,000. You know, right, I've got a balance of 284. I could make that number, you know, $350,000 if I wanted. Right. But the problem is. Then you have nothing the next year. Well, no, that number, that 200, or that 284,000. So offsets our assessment. Right. We add in the retained earnings to offset our assessments. Right. So then then what each town has to pay. That's what I'm trying to do. Yes. So yeah. for every between yes. revenue and what we tax people. Yes. Yeah. So for every more dollar that we set aside, we have to decrease the retained earnings line there right. as income. And right now we're sitting at one point nine one percent increase from last year. Right. Um so but What's we've the temperature had, in the room? We've had, <laughs> um, you know, 8.7% inflation. Yes, 100%. So 100%. is it unrealistic to give a 1.9 to make people, give people a false sense of how wonderful we are, when in fact what you're doing is taking 6% inflation rate and not, not taking account of it? The, the, one, yeah. one of the problems is that we, the yeah. town of Deerfield, pays for our ambulance service out of free cash. Right. So traditionally, we are very, very conservative in estimating our revenue. So we usually have free cash between one and two million dollars. Right. However, the last few years, just because it's been so hard to balance our budget and um, you know, things have just been so tough, potentially right. we could, we're going to go under a million dollars. So for us to pay a third of our free cash to the ambulance is going to be tough because it that means there's less money to offset the school budgets, which may be coming in for us, you know, seven or eight percent. All I'm trying to figure out is yeah. how do you raise this sixty two five mm -hmm. to You're taking the, it, taking no, it I'm not okay. to the eighty. So um, in other words it's a it's a difference of about um, seventeen five. Then we just decrease. What we do is we decrease seventeen thousand from the three assessments. Okay. What do you mean decrease? Don't you? you no, know, you, you, you decrease what you're going to give for. So they'll go up. They'll, right. These are going to go up right. by seventeen thousand. Right. So Deerfields would go up by a little bit more than half of that seventeen thousand. Right. So approximately nine thousand dollars. Right. 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 So nine thousand. Uh, uh, right. I agree. We should probably go up to eighty. But so that means the returned retained earnings is going to go down. Right. By seventeen. So okay. we just went through this tax season, and we raised revenue. I mean, the amount of money we're going to bring in is like one point six. <clears throat> when in theory we could have done two point five, and 
all I'm just, I'm, I know this is probably the wrong form to ask it in, but the reality is we need more money than we're bringing in. Yes. And we're not spending money on things like a planner grant writer because we keep trying to cheap out and it's going to cause problems in the long run. Mm -hmm. And Tim, I've seen some people who are very fiscally conservative, and I consider myself to be pretty fiscally conservative, even though I'm liberal uh, in other issues, that are coming around. We need to have a way to bring money to the town by getting a grant writer planner. I mean, I think you've said that recently, Matt. And, you know, it's going to be more and more in order to keep the town running properly, you're going to have to have this function. Mm -hmm. And unless we get really serious about it, we're going to be behind everyone else. Tim, I've been saying, I've been on broken record that it's not sustainable the way we're funding our town the way it is. Yeah. And we also are educating the county with our school choice. Right. And so I am advocating to hire a consultant just to look at our school choice issues. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, so the question was increasing the set aside for the ambulance to 80,000 would decrease um the offset for assessments to 267,000 and change which would change the bottom line percentage increase to 4.53 percent um an increase for the town of deerfield of 15,667 dollars Okay, so <laughs> what you what you have on this page yeah. is you've already calculated sixty two five. I'm saying seventeen five to increase it to eighty. Yes, that is what I just so did. So seventeen five is gonna do what? It's going to basically uh, that changes the percentage increase from last year to four point five three percent. Um so if instead of Deerfield paying uh Three hundred and fifty-two thousand. They would be assessed three hundred and sixty-one thousand. Right. That's yes, basically right. what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nine thousand yeah. bucks. Right. Um, now I know uh, part of this too is the narrative that we tell. I'm happy all day long to be like for fifteen thousand dollars more. Look at what you're getting. Um, but I know that five percent. You know, people are going to see five percent, and so if the people in this room aren't willing to go back and articulate and argue for why that really isn't that much, then we're good to go. My, um, well, I'm just going to give you my opinion. <coughs> my opinion is to have Zach come in at um, the 1.91% uh, 1 1 increase and say to the finance committee, we, we need to put more money towards the ambulance and then have them discuss yeah, that's that fine. you want to strategy, raise the right. 80. Because if yeah. we decide to raise the 80, right. and Zach comes in with a 4%, he's going to get gri grilled. Yeah, it's easier to let them say, look, yeah. the, rea the reality is the ambulance cost now costs $363,000. Right. And we have to figure out in the next two years what, how are we making that difference. Right. I, I think it's a, a one-pager. Yeah. Here's where I'm with our trucks. We've got a 19... Or 2004, 18, whatever. 1876. <laughs> <laughs> out there, we got to replace. Yeah. Plus, we got three life packs, two that need to replace at 50 grand a piece, adding a third, which, when you look three, four years down the line, probably going to need a third. Yep. Yeah. You know, so we should we should plan for that. Here's what the money looks like. We just approved eight million dollars for a library in town. How can we not approve the money to keep people alive? And you tell the NFL story all day long. It was the lowest paid people on that field who saved the life of the guy who got hit. The reason they saved his life? Because they had one of these. The one we got is dying, and when it dies, we can't fix it. And then we can't send out our ambulances to the highest, highest, highest cost. Highest paid. Yeah. yeah. Reimbursement. Um, this is, I, I'm, I'm, I was explaining to somebody else, I never, I, it's not my style to submit a budget that has any sort of fluff in it. I don't play a game, right? right? I'm like, this is what we're doing. I'm happy to articulate these things, let the finance committee, you know, make these decisions and conclusions. Mm -hmm. I have 
three finance committees and three select boards though that I have yeah. to walk through that process. So, you know, I don't want to submit this budget with you guys being like, oh no, at finance committee, we'll just talk it up to whatever and then have Sunderland and Waitley go, this is great, could chunk 1.9% and then, you know, Right. We're only going to be able to pass the 1.9 because we got to get it through three town meetings. Um, that's my only yeah. hesitation. I mean, the other that. thing is that you stick with this number and you say, realistically, uh, going forward, this is not going to get us to, to the new ambulance. Oh, no. What? What? Uh, if I'm submitting cap capital requests for the difference out of raising and appropriating, I have to also submit those capital requests in a separate capital budget to the other towns too, to make sure that they're par paying their portion of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, That's why it's important to get it into Deerfield so that we can decide how we're going to handle it to give you some direction. Well, I, I mean, we got to work six angles here three select boards and three finance commit uh nine angles and three town meetings so um i it's you know it's a shame that bob and and uh tom, tom left uh really like the the nitty-gritty here is having the board of oversight be you know the fighting group for it be like nope we sat in the boo meeting we discussed this this is what we stand by that, that's um, why it's important to have yeah. at least one more meeting I mean, I feel like we got to meet next week. Yeah, I, I've already scheduled for my Sunderland presentation, you know, next week or the week after, so. Because, well, you can say this is a draft budget. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm... Um, yeah. So when do you want to meet? Is February... Um, this would be... Um, what we'd be doing is um, February 21st next month, if it's the third Tuesday of the month. Third Tuesday is... Oh. How does that... Do you have, what do you have for between, between Oh, now? I have it already in my calendar for some reason, so that's a good sign. Yeah, you had something for like, was it February 8th? Oh, no, that's, those are the 2000, oh jeez, I'm all over the place. Yes, 2022 February is February 8th, 2023 would be February 21. So before we adjourn, we should vote in, on these planned 2023 meetings, which are at the bottom of my uh, executive summary. Um, but I um, trucks. Uh, yeah, I feel OES. like we have to meet at least. You, we, it only takes forty-eight hours to post a meeting. So if you have well, be problems with some finance committee or capital improvement committee or whatever, if we're on the same schedule, we would meet every month: January, February, March, April. Yes. Um. So it would be February twenty-first. And March 21st. Correct. And then April, April 18th. 18th. Okay. Um, I, we're jumping ahead a little bit there, but that's fine. I think the other... I know it's a nightmare to, to schedule, but I feel like people need to know that there's a 24-month 20, lead on this. This is a lot different than the 14-month lead was the last I had heard, or it's the last I remember. And so now we're up to 24 months, and you know we had anticipated with being trying to set aside this 250. No one anticipated right. the cost of an ambulance going up to 363. We were doing our diligence right. that you know right. we can't. Yeah. So there is going to be a little bit of trying to scramble to cover yeah. that, but we need to. You need to talk to the other two towns, and. Not and not, obviously you'll talk to Deerfield, but um, you know this is what we're we're scrambling with, yep. what we're trying to deal with. What you know, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that this is this is the cost of doing business. The big unknowns here are these capital replacements that we have to do. We've got grants out in the weeds. This is a draft budget, um, but with the understanding that we're basically underfunding this capital replacement, and we're going to have to. Figure out yeah, and okay. it might be useful just from a visual standpoint to have a you know bulleted stuff. Don't don't you know have it in this storyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to. Oh sure, know, yeah. Say oh, we need three life packs. We need you know one ambulance. 
are we, I'm going to ask because I don't know, are we allowed to send like an email on behalf of the BOO to the three select boards, kind of outlining this sooner rather than later so that they're aware of it? Or to the town administrators? Actually, that and, might be a, a and, smart thing for Zach to do to, that we as the BOO have now identified capital issues um, to be, you know, to, we have to discuss how we're going to deal with that. The life pack replacements and the ambulance and the lead time. Make sure you talk about the lead time is now up to 24 months um, and it's 363 versus the 250. Yeah. And even if we get this, I mean, if we order the, the ambulance and it comes in in 24 months, um, we're going to have this fiscal year between four sixty-two thousand and a fiscal year twenty-five sixty-two thousand. Yeah. But it will set the stage for it. we need to change the retained earnings for the future because yeah. we're gonna confront this problem. Yeah. But the right they're not gonna slash these prices right. once everybody's willing to pay them. Right. Yeah. Um yeah. There there might be some decrease in the vehicle. I was reading an article today that Things are starting to catch up, and things are starting to get better. So you may see some, yeah. some discounting in the vehicle chassis itself. Mm -hmm. What you're not going to see is the, the discount in the equipment. You know, all the custom work that's got to be done because all those wages have gone up for the oh, folks yeah, right. who are doing it, and they're right. not going down. Those those are all aluminum welders making those boxes. You know, out right. of stock right. from scratch. So right. they're just yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. I, the other big thing here that's that's an ongoing, and I, I realized after I typed this all up that I probably just over-explained it and didn't need to. Um, I was in a fugue state when I was creating this. Um, but I pulled out um, the overtime budget for hours worked versus the overtime that we're paying merely because there are holidays. Um, so that $50,000 line item for overtime holiday pay, um, is strictly just like you you worked 40 hours that week but there was a holiday that week and so really um, on average employees are working I, f I did the math out 2.7 hours of overtime per employee per <coughs> week um, which is that is like being held over on one call or coming in a little bit early to meet with CQI um, or covering one overtime shift a month. I mean, this is this is not burnout level, this is not um, mismanagement level or like misstaffing uh, level. Um, and the other thing too is that is only like a thousand hours a year across all employees, which is half what another full-time employee um, would work and at a fraction of the cost. of a full-time no, employee right no so benefit. so right so when you're looking at like oh we're encumbering so much overtime we need to hire full-time staff to offset it we're not there yet and I'm not worried about the, the burnout but when you combine the hours worked with those holiday hours that's when that number looks so large um, what what we have to do is explain that you know the highway department and the police department have you know contracts so their overtime doesn't show up the same way your overtime does. And, you know, I know we've been getting, but if 50,000 of the 70,000 is related to holiday time, there's nothing you can do about yeah. it. No. Yeah, no. Yeah. Just stay know, open. Right. Right. And, and that was the thing, and that's what I think I tried to, like, I rambled on here about, mm -hmm. was like, well, if we force them to take eight hours off, Real, you, you just create a domino effect where right. ultimately you're just paying somebody else the overtime to backfill their shift and that person's backfilling the and so it's easier for people just to work their standard shift anyway because it costs the same and you have consistency and um and you're not trying to yeah it's so, also a lot cheaper than having to negotiate oh with a collective bargaining or something like that yeah. Um, yeah, and I think, I, and, and the employees, you know, like they're, because of the, the nature of the schedule, we don't work Mondays through Fridays, right? So it's like, if you fall on a Monday, Tuesday, or Monday, Wednesday, and the holiday is observed on Friday, you still reap those benefits. You work mm -hmm. your 40 hours, and there's parity across all staff. It's not like, well, you only work Fridays, and you always get the holidays, and what the hell? And, you know, it's just like, mm -hmm. no, like, if there's, there's consistency, and there's, yeah. Hey, the IV pumps... Oh, yeah, the IV pumps. Um, 
a number of years ago, so they were acquired by OEMS, but then there wasn't a, a transport certified one, so they suspended the requirement. At the time, we thought they were gonna be $7,000 a piece. It turns out they're only like $2,200 a piece. So they are now available. Um, there is the model that is being adopted. Northampton has it. They've been fielding it for a year and a half now. Um, and so that will be a capital request paid for out of retained earnings for 7,500 bucks. So Perfect. yeah, it's a requirement from OEMS. You already approved this once for three times the amount. Um, we released those funds back. No brainer, we gotta do it. Um, not only are we required, but it's gonna increase patient safety, provider safety, um, all those things. So can um, we wait until July 1? Did you need it before July 1? Um, as soon as town meeting, th there is no long turnaround on those. Okay. Um, as soon as town meeting passes, we can order, order it, them and then pay July one. The, yeah, the bill would have to come after July one. Okay. Um, because that's when the fiscal year would be delivered. Okay. Um, but yes, um, the. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to bring up again is we still have to, you know, the audit town, the town of Deerfield had an audit, and they are con still concerned about the write-offs, um, too high amount to, of you know we're carrying on the books. We got to write it off. So, um, I just want clarity on what's happening with our collections. I know our collections are good. We we're, have good collections, but why are we having so many, so much retention or on the books? What's we don't write anything off until it's until we've exhausted every possible and it, opportunity, and it hits five years or seven years old or whatever the thing is. I, I, I think, think it's that's gonna, I think that's what the problem is. It, I think five years is too long. That's why we're having these huge amounts. So I, if we want to change that, that who sort of what you're I, 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 you know, I think that at some point it's it would be good for, you know, us to sit down with Brenda so that we're all hearing the same thing from the same person at the same time. Yeah. Because she's the one that says the auditor is flagged it was like a million dollars of non paid over a five-year period. And you're saying that you have 95% or 91% collection rate. And I'm going, a million dollars over five years, there's no way that the collection rate can be 91%. Yeah. So I, uh, we need to figure out what's, we, what's happening. My now. understanding is that, so I've been trying quarterly. Sometimes it drags out to four or five months, depending on my workload. Um, but anything that is older than five years gets written off. I, we just did another whatever that mm -hmm. was. But I, I say just did, that was before the yeah. holidays or whatever. So we're due for another Last one. Meeting. But That's it should number. be about the same amount. Right. But that is, that is only things that are older than five years. Um, I think if we don't want to be sending these people to like a collections agency and have creditors calling them, which my understanding is we don't, and five years is too long, then I say we just need to rewrite our write-off policy, you know, to say mm -hmm. that anything older than two and a half years or what, like whatever the decision is, and then we can just start shaking. Would the auditor stuff be up. happier if it went into after three years it goes into bad debt and it sits in bad debt for two years until we write it off? Well, my concern is that we are kind of a we're a municipal EMS, so there's only a few municipal EMS in the whole state. Mm -hmm. So our, is he looking at our standard, is the standard for us different, or is he not explaining what our standard is? Because our write-off, I mean, we spend a lot of time on our write-off policy, and we yeah. did pick that five-year cutoff, and so I'm thinking that it's the five-year cutoff where we're getting this million-dollar build-up. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, yeah. And we, we dragged it out because in speaking with the company that does our billing and in speaking, and I'll go back, I think Mary and we, and we have the collection was the agency. treasurer. We've got the collection, collection agency, agency, and part of it becomes if it was an auto accident, it could be litigated mm -hmm. for three or four years. If somebody's passed away, by the time they settle an estate they, and pay all the bills. I, I know we pick five years for a reason. Yeah. And I, I think, just want to make sure that the numbers are accurate that like Brenda's giving us numbers and then I, I we don't talk about the same things in this meeting yeah right so how do I compare what Brenda's saying to us I, and how do we, how does that relate to what you're telling us yeah that's a great point and I know that Comstar 
manages a lot of that bookkeeping too, uh, like, you know, independently of, of Brenda. And so they give me an aging report and I apply a write-off policy to it. And I'm like, write-off, 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 don't write-off, write-off, write-off. And I forward that to them. They reconcile their thing. And then they talk back to Brenda and say, this is what our balance is. And then they make the deposit. Like, I, I don't understand how that whole process Ooh. works. It's not Tom, Tom Scanlon who audits. It is. Yeah. Have we asked Tom for, or he can't recommend a suggestion on the well, policy? He, the he's, well, we haven't gotten our report yet, so okay. we don't. I mean, he. It would. It's just that we never. Honestly, we run a tight ship, so no, we, we don't get any recommendations. Sure. So he he told us that this year he was going to write a recommendation because he had a problem with carrying okay. this much on the books i i'm happy to do whatever and, and i think the other question too is what is the like i'd like to see versus the this is bad practice right. you know and like making those distinctions well, when we made the five year that remind you know what you just said that reminded me of why we did pick the five year and i so i mean if we said that to tom maybe he would have a different because back in the day mary stokarski had said you know, once you've exhausted everything here, I can take a look and see, you know, is there an opportunity to put a lien on a property? Right. If we needed to. And not that, I don't want to get people panicked, we're not going to put no, liens no, no, on no, houses. No, 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 for estates, basically. Right, estates. Right. We could do that, and that, beyond the process we needed to play out, she needed time for her process right. to play out. And I think that's where we got to it. But... My question becomes, if we write it off after three, and then we get a payment, can we still accept payment if it's written off? I don't think so, right? I don't think right. So, so do, does it go from, you know, do we need to create a separate bucket that says aging debt or bad debt, so after three years, it'll come off of our books, go into this other bucket? Like expected to be written off in two years, basically. Right. And then the automatic policy on that is as soon as that hits five years, and we'll look at it on a quarterly basis, yeah. then we'll submit a, a request to... I, I think what we have to, to do is we have to sit down with Tom Scanlon, yes. Brenda, and us yeah. at, at some kind of meeting and talk about how we want to handle this because mm -hmm. I, I believe our collection rate is good and you know there's no really question about that because we... In our, but our mix, how you know, what we can get from private insurance versus Medicare is strong, mm -hmm. and that's why one of the reasons we are able to sustain our yeah. service. Yeah, and I, this isn't being mentioned, but I want to make sure that everybody in TV land understands this, right? Like, our, our rates of collection are excellent, and that is, by, by that I mean, the percentage of money we receive that we actually expect to receive. So we expect to get, you know, $300 for every Medicare patient, even though we're technically billing $1,200 because we have to bill everybody the same amount because that's fair. And so the difference has to be written off. So if we get that full 325 because that's what we expected, that's a 100% collection, even though we have $800 to write off on the books or whatever. So like, there, there's weird stuff like that. Um, and so the question is, What's and, best and practice people for need the to understand that the reason why the mix of private insurance is so important is because the private insurance will pay the full a higher amount the right. full twelve hundred whatever. It's like looking at your medical yeah. statement after you've been to the doctor. The doctor charges you seven hundred dollars for the visit. It says um, insurance write off three hundred and seventy five dollars. Right. Uh, X number of dollars two hundred twenty five was paid to your provider. You're now responsible for the rest. Right. Except in this case, we can't go after the patient for the rest once no. Medicare has paid us. If it's if, right, if it's Medicare, Medicaid, we're not allowed to balance bill the patient right. because, right. by definition, they can't afford but it. If it's yeah. private insurance, right? Well, right. I mean, maybe that's one of the. If if that in fact is one of the things that's driving up this this number over a long period of time, I wonder if there's a way to flag this and say, okay. Once we receive the Medicare payment, this this other debt is no longer collectible. How do we automatically write it yeah. off? I mean, that's the question. I mean, do we put it into okay? These are the Medicare write-offs <coughs> for this quarter. Yes, right, right. You know that that's true. We could once Medicare is paid, 
because they do pay within a three or four month period. So then you could write off Medicare, all the Medicare accounts, yeah. and that would take a tremendous amount off of our- In theory, in if theory. that's what's theory. causing yeah. it. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, that sounds sound, right. but I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we need. I'm the least knowledgeable yeah. person yeah. of anybody here about all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's why I, I rely on Brenda to. Okay, we're saying this. Does that make any sense from an accountant's point of view? Right. Well, and it might. Well, I mean, the other question would just turn to Comstar. Be like, yeah. what are your other clients? How do they handle this? And they go, oh, well, this is their process on do that. Do we get Comstar on the phone with Brenda? Yes, and Tom? but don't forget, we are municipal. Right. Per Thing, and a lot of the other ambulance services have special contracts with that sure. they get a right. set rate, yeah. and right. so there is no write-off, and there is no extra billing or whatever. Yeah. We just. But if that's what if that's a percentage of what what we're seeing, it's like the Medicare bill, it's twelve hundred, but we're only going to get three twenty-five. Then and we technically know that, the rest is the is right. The, that it's fantasy money. That right, and we're just running the clock out. Yeah. Why yeah. can't we? Yeah. Just yeah. Say so this is this is the nature of this type of collection versus private insurer collection. It's totally different. Yeah. There's an expectation that within five years you might get some. Right. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. as Medicare is not going to give yeah. you anymore. Right. But that's the same as when you look at your overtime pay. Mm -hmm. If fifty thousand, fifty thousand five hundred ninety nine dollars is just holiday overtime, then what you're, you're looking 20, at twenty thousand something in, in overtime. 21,000 in overtime is yeah. like no money. If you want to break it out further, Brenda puts in a line item that says holiday overtime money and the budget gets built for that versus the regular overtime. Yeah. It all depends on how granular you want to get and how much. But I think we need to do that because what is happening is people look at the, the overtime budget at 70,000, 70, almost 71,000 and they'll say, I, oh my God, that's a lot of overtime. I, no, just to clarify here. Seventy thousand is the overtime work. That is, two point whatever hours a week right. times fifty two weeks times ten employees. Right. Um, so the total overtime budget is over plus fifty. Yeah, it's so over a hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah. Right. J just for clarification. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. One hundred twenty. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Right. Fifty of it is we're going to have to pay anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. No matter what you do, do. you're going to have to pay that overtime right. for the holiday. Oh, for the holiday. Yes. So that changes what people are thinking mm -hmm. of right. from. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's no more than trying to include the benefit cost for the schools and the school budget versus the town budget mm -hmm. to get to a real number for what I know. employees cost. I know. We don't have updated indirect cost numbers in this or updated OPEB numbers. Um, those are carried over 63000 and $2,000 respectively. Um, so I don't know. We're probably talking a difference of well, what did it go up? Oh, it went down from 21 to 22, then it went up um, I, 7, because 000, the, so Because the budget is so stable at 1.9%, I it, would assume it's close relatively to the same. Close. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it's based as a percentage of your total budget. Got it. Um, but I just wanted to warn you that number is still, and employee benefits, that is an estimation um, based on calculations, but normally that is all ultimately provided to me by the clerk's office or whatever. This is what your number will be. Right. Um, so I don't have that number yet, so that, that may change. But um, I always try to kind of estimate but aim a little high, but I don't know. Um, yeah. Tim, do you have any other questions based on this is your first time at looking at this? No, I mean, I, um, I <laughs> need to pay a little more you know, looking at where the OPEV is on this thing. Oh, it is down under transfer to Deerfield right General here. Fund. Okay. It's based on Most the 4% um, mm -hmm. that we, 4% mm -hmm. uh, that the rest of the town puts aside. It, right. That is a, that is a gesture yes. amount, right? right. That yeah. two th that two thousand dollars is. It's not but, reflective of what true costs are. Uh -huh. But, I mean, that's what the Finance Committee voted and to support mm -hmm. town-wide, they wouldn't want to go, they didn't want to go up. Yeah, so and I'm happy to put whatever number in there is yeah. recommended. But, but Zach has to pay the exact same as right. all of our town hall staff, everybody. Mm -hmm. So if we vote and How much underfunded is that at this point? Drop in the bucket. No, I mean, how much is, 
How much do we owe OPEM? Millions? Nobody knows, but probably millions. Yeah. The schools alone drive us up into the millions. Because mm -hmm. um, the schools are not setting aside. The majority of employees are school related, just like our school budget, our town budget is almost 70% school related, and nobody is putting aside the appropriate amount of OPEP. That's why those costs should go into the school budget so you can see what a true school budget is. Because that is millions sitting out. I mean, it won't be in our lifetime, but it will be 25 to 30 years down. Out. Mm -hmm. out. The operational reserves. We struck that for in 23. Okay. Um, if we were just, even through COVID, uh, we were keeping our estimated revenues low enough that there was no reason to carry both operational okay. reserves and lowball the revenue. Okay. The decision was one or the other here, so we struck that. Okay. That was a budgeting decision to keep our I, I remember, I just want to, you know, it was carried over again this year, so I just want to make sure that we're all in alignment that... I mean, we can change that just like we did before, but... Yeah, you put $100,000 back in, we can drive the we, cost back we, out. So. I was just going to say, we're trying to keep the assessments as low as possible mm -hmm. because the towns are going to have but a I think it's, it's another part of the narrative we didn't need a finance committee to say, hey, we have looked at this and, you know, we, right. we're mm -hmm. doing our best to be as accurate as we can. There's not a whole lot of fluff to Zach. When Zach does present to the finance committee, if you could come for sure, it would be really good. Let me know when it is and I'll do my best to be there. Thanks. It's not saying that I wouldn't appreciate you being there too. too oh no! But, I, but I feel free to come along and join the party. Yes, I wouldn't actually, but it, it's really important as a voting member that you were there with me to help support Zach. And uh, who, what's the agency that that comes in and looks at the uh, frame of the? Uh, uh, it's a uh, OEMS Office of Emergency Medical Services. Mm -hmm. So they are our li licensing body under. Massachusetts DPH. Right. So the question is, um, is a, they give you like a 12-year lifespan of these vehicles? They, as a general rule, just like the cardiac monitor, they start wincing at 10 years mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons. One is they say it's just getting worn out. Right. Um, the other one is that as the years progress, they require new updated safety equipment right. that obviously the older trucks are grandfathered from. Right. And so they're like, after 10 years, like this thing is a death trap compared to what the standard is now. Right. Um, and so at 10 years, they start wincing. That particular generation, that E-series Ford chassis where mm -hmm. it meets the box, the stresses, right. he goes, he's like right here, they crack right here. He's like, I'm shocked yours isn't. And the only reason it isn't is because it doesn't have the same road miles that right. some of the others do. Right. Um, but he's always like, mm. um, The other thing too is the, the turbo and the EGR valve. So we just had service done on that truck. Uh, we're taking them to Northampton Ford. They're real cracker jacks down there. And he's mm -hmm. like, we're like, what's, what's the estimate here? And he's like, He's like, EGR and turbo, soon, that's the next thing. You're looking at like $7,000. Um, and so we're reaching a point where like, we might just even have to sideline it because it's cost prohibitive just to keep putting money into it, um, mm -hmm. depending on what the replacement schedule is like. Well, I was just trying to figure out, you know, um, if you had to go to a five year, mm -hmm. you know, retained earnings mm -hmm. thing to come up with a number, um, currently you'd have to have 72 six over a five-year period to buy a new um, at three hundred sixty-two yeah. thousand. Yeah. Um, but we have three ambulances and possibly might look at a four. So then you come into a have to buy two ambulances every ten years, and of course the price is going to go up. Yeah. So the seventy-two is going to go up to you know. And yeah. I think um, I think we're good with three ambulances. Mm -hmm. um, even. I think we will be able to maintain three ambulances through, you know, 24 hour staffing right. you know, additions later on. Right. Um, but I think that third ambulance being 12 years old versus 15, right. I mean, those last right. three years, you They're know, brutal. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so you're, so looking, yeah, you're looking at four years yeah. to pay for an ambulance. So yeah. we yeah. want to get to a hundred thousand now right. and then be looking beyond that because you're going to need money for right. equipment, monitors, yeah. and it's going to, the cost yeah. is going to continue to go up. Yeah. Right. 
What if you didn't buy a pumper recently? Sunderland was the last one to buy a pumper. Yeah. I think Tom was saying it was over half a million dollars for a pumper. Oh, it's got to be more than that. I bet close to a million. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're like... <laughs> so... Because currently, the you're right, if we had to pay for that $363,000 every four years, it's 90750 yeah. yeah, you'd have to round it to 100 yeah. Yeah, and just right because yeah. in four years' time at well seven percent, we should, we should <laughs> we, the message should be we should go to eighty now. We should go to hundred next year, and then we need to look at that number beyond that. Yeah, it may need to be a hundred and ten or hundred. Or what if that number is just tied to inflation? Yeah, yeah, or yeah, put in an inflationary clause and say, look, we're not going to go, you know, the cola. It's not gonna, we're not going to adjust it every year. We're gonna we're gonna set it at three yeah. percent and see if that works. Yeah. Or we're going to set it five percent and see if that works. Or we're going to go off. You know, we're going to look at a state bid for yeah. what a comparable ambulance would be, and we'll adjust these numbers annually based on yeah the state. You know what? What we see in a rising cost. Actually, cost. Matt, I think I would like to see us adjust it annually. Yeah, based, based on, on the reality. This, based on the reality. Reality. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's well, crazy. It, <laughs> it because, but it doesn't make sense to set a, a five-year <clears throat> or four-year number that's either hopefully going to be enough or not enough mm -hmm. or inadequate for whatever you know and part of part of the answer may be you know we're going to pull out our retained earnings or mm -hmm. you know adjust yeah. it from that whatever we need to do but we're getting to a point where you're going to replace the ambulances more frequently we got to be closer to what the number is it isn't going to be mm -hmm. hey we got this thing for 10 years Throw you know twenty five thirty five in the bank, and at the end of nine years, we'll be pretty close. So we'll ask for the difference, and we're good. Yeah. yeah. Because the difference may be over hundred thousand dollars. But, that, course, yeah. but that's what we used to do because right. we were electric. like t within ten or twenty thousand. Right. It's gonna be. This is. I'm there for that. Crazy. Yeah. No, this is crazy. No yeah. more turbos. Oh, I am no there. More any of that other electric stuff. ambulances. I'm. I am totally there for that. Totally. I mean, in four. Assuming assuming the technology is mature for it, but like I think that's gonna be because we're based in a station. Right. You right. got your own EV chargers. You got your solar panels that you mandatorily now have put on your roof. Um, you know, I, 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 I can tell you that I've had my Tesla for over three and some odd years. I spent $25 so far on repairs, and it was because I got a nail in my tire. Oof. And there's no gas, there's no carburetor, <laughs> there's no, none, none of this stuff. So I think that's going to be the, the thing that. Ford has got these electric trucks that work really well. Yeah, um, the question is, how big a battery pack, et cetera? But right. Ram's uh, getting ready. Ram's putting one out. Yeah. Chevy's think, got one coming. Yeah. I think there's a uh, Amherst just. I think their latest ambulance is a diesel hybrid. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think they're still figuring out how to make that work. Yeah. Um, as far as an ambulance, you know, like the the diesel engine shuts off, but like important ambulance stuff. Were tied into the the battery. alternator, not the battery, yeah. you know, and so like it shut off on scene, and they were, like they were out, and so it was just growing pains. I my think, yeah. my fear becomes, I know it's not every call, but the long duration calls where you got to park on site. Sure. I was over in Europe in November. They had electric buses, which are great, except every time the bus stops and lets people off, the driver's coming out and putting a Honda generator on the curb <laughs> side, starting it up and plugging the bus in to recharge it. Mm -hmm. So. You know, yeah, it's got to be, you know, the subsurface, you know. Yeah, and then when you're looking at that, they're saying battery packs for 10 years, so we're going to need to adjust, yeah, to make sure we're getting sure. Where well, you just base your replacement on yeah. that. Yeah. And I was going to say, we used to put aside fifty thousand dollars, and I think actually might have even just been 21 here, or we 20. Upped it. We upped it to 62.5 yeah. based on you know, whatever. Well, we're we just, thought yeah. it was going to yeah. have to be more, yeah. yeah. Well, COVID happened. Nobody knew this. Nobody knew. I know. So I will, um, I will submit this draft budget with this 1.9, with the caveat of, of what it is. I will also submit the capital request for the pumps out of retained earnings, and then the ambulance and the life pack replacement with the narratives of we've applied for a grant, but if we don't get it, this is what we're short, mm -hmm. um, basically, and the turnaround time. You yeah. know, whether we get that grant or not, we're still going to need the money to buy it. So. Okay. And we and we should put an order in this year. Okay. Yeah. Um, this, this fiscal year. Do we? And I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. The 
the 1.9, do we have also message that we should raise that from to the retained or the money we're putting away from 62 up to 80,000? Or we, we should ask them for their advice. We need their <laughs> advice. Great. Oh, this is what we're discussing. Yeah. How, you know, because each town is going to have some mm -hmm. input and be, I mean, we don't, none of us have the school budget. So we don't know what's really going to happen yet. Okay. Once school budgets come in, we'll know how much is left for the municipal purposes. And everything has to be paid out of. So maybe, like in Deerfield, we might take this out of capital stabilization because the money's sitting there. We've got to spend this, and we don't have any wiggle room to, to you know, up the ante. Sunderland might feel that they want to take it out of taxpayers, or Waitley want to take it out of the raise and appropriate, so theirs would come out of a different way. I think the towns have to figure out, once we get the school budget, what they're going to do, and then poor Zach has got to... So do we, when he's doing a lot of, does he put that $80,000 amount and what the difference would be to each town? It would mean an increase That would be of one of the things we're thinking of as the oversight board. Right. But this would be the impact. Mm -hmm. The oversight board would recommend the following increase, knowing that school budgets haven't oh. come in. Oh, I don't even think the, we'd the, say recommend. We could say the, the oversight board has, has identified, okay. identified a, a right. short fall, you know, a short short fall. Fall because of the increased cost of and that's how you get sector. your and that's how you get in. There's a 24 month lead line. Yeah. Uh, and the ordering, there's, you know, yeah. we have this shortage of at least $110,000. Who knows by the time we set the order in in July, is it up to three seventy five or three eighty? I mean, nobody knows this kind of information, but this is what we're thinking of. Mm -hmm. um, so then you allow the towns to think, okay, how are we going to come up with this based on our own finances? Because they, the town this is your share how are you going to pay for it is is the way we're going to have to do it anyway because people are in different coming from different situations do we give them the heads up that next year we're recommending we need to raise this to a hundred thousand at least a hundred thousand dollars well i think we have to say that yeah that's one of the things we're considering and this is going to impact the assessments and it's going to impact the budget uh and Without bottom knowing, line. Yeah, without knowing what the retained earnings are going to be, we can't say for certain, right. you know, what the impact will be, but by nature of having to put aside more money, you would expect that the assessments yeah. are going to go. I, I mean, so you've got to, we got to give some different options for the towns. I, I understand. I just, I want to be honest. I want to be transparent. Because what I don't want to do is get in there next year. Well, you never told us, so we weren't prepared. No, no, no. Yeah. no. We told you. Because do you feel to be the worst? Because... You're going to be looking to do the 1880-something building mm -hmm. on the heels of the library. Well, Tom, Tom came tonight with somebody saying that we're paying too much. It's, you know, it's those kind of uninformed, awful comments. And you terrible. know what? The people who say we're paying too much, I challenge them. I Go talk to Greenfield. Go talk to some of these other communities that, that pay for the service. I know. And find out what they pay for. And, what and more get, importantly, what, what you pay. actually get. When you call 911, what, who is really coming? Well, also, there's no subterfuge here, right? Like, no. it's, like, it's super transparent, so we're, we know what it costs. We're not feeding shareholders. We're taking care of our community and trying to provide the best service. And, with and you know what? I never, ever hear any complaints right. about when people come to respond for... I only hear good things about our EMS who come and do, you know, the call. So, am I really worried? No, but it's just hurtful to hear that I kind of stuff. I agree. And we work so hard to set this up. I feel like it runs really, really well. It does. And we... But it's, yeah. it's people who are taking, making comments, uneducated comments. Not that I mean the people making the comments are uneducated. They may be, but they haven't educated or immersed themselves in the information well enough to determine we got a pretty darn good deal for what we've got. And and we're working hard to maintain that good deal. Yes. I mean, this wouldn't have happened without, you know, yeah. long-term we're not in. We're not sitting on Mercedes-Benz ambulances out there. No. We don't have, we've got 
very good equipment, but you need very good equipment to be reliable so that you can attract and retain very good or highly qualified paramedics to provide that service. Well, actually, we could do better and we should do better because that third bus is a basic. It's not an right. ALS. We would be collecting more money on that third bus if we were, um, yes. you know, had the Well, and because our standard is paramedic anyway, when that when that truck goes out, there are paramedics on it. We're yeah. paying paramedics right. to be on that truck, but we are only collecting. Yeah. yeah, right. We're we're cutting them off at the knees because they don't have the and an advanced level care brings in about how much more over a basic level? More than fifty percent. Oh, it's like a difference of a thousand dollars. Yeah. So so yeah. fifty fifty five zero calls. Oh yeah. Pays for a life pack. Yes. And more important than the money. If it's your loved one who's having that cardiac event and needs a life pack and the basic truck shows up because that's all that's left and it doesn't have a life pack because you didn't want to spend $50,000 amongst three communities to buy a life pack, shame on you. Or we were at the football game anyway, but we have to wait for the other ambulance to get over here. Because we don't have that. Because I don't have a life pack on this truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a small cost to pay. Actually, I feel like that is really not a smart deal. We should be buying that life pack for that third vehicle already. And we should be authorizing it out of retained earnings right now. I, if we had the life pack on the third truck, mm -hmm. would that mean that you could bill more? Yes. Yeah. Every single call that that truck goes on would be billed at the ALS level. Of the I mean, assuming that they need yeah. ALS. No, I'm not a voting but yeah. member, right. but yeah. I would ask you actually to make the motion that you... I will make the motion <coughs> that we purchase three life packs instead of two so that we can equip all three trucks to provide paramedic level of care. It, do it doesn't actually make sense from a economic point of view. Not even, I, I'm not saying even from the patient view, if you're the yeah. one that's stuck with the basic. And when you and not that those paramedics won't do their job, they will. They but don't have the correct tools. equipment. Right, but it doesn't, from no, a, even from an economic point of view, it doesn't make sense to have that as a basic. Okay. Because we should be doing billing ALS for all, all our ambulances. So actually, you need to take care of that. Yeah. So to purchase you a need third to life pack 15 to equip all three, three vehicles. All um, three. Uh, there will be some some miscellaneous, you know, expense. You know, like we'll have to get you know another set of bag. But like we're talking about pennies or whatever. So it's. Um, but yeah, uh, purchase a third life pack to equip all three to make vehicles. Make that a LS at, at the ALS. A LS so what are, do I need to amend? For fifty thousand, fifty thousand a piece. Or are you good with the fifty thousand number? And well, no, we're just we're gonna work. It'll be one. So I I've already got it. So I'll if I add fifty thousand here, then we would decrease the. Um, this would go to two thirty four, and then this. I, we're underestimating our revenues anyway. Yeah. So when we, at the end of the year, we'll have made up the difference. And it just doesn't make sense to That build. shows an increase of 9.4% in the budget. Um, I'm, I don't want to raise estimated revenues without seeing, because I'm already increasing it by $50,000 for this upcoming year. Um, that's the upper limit. So this would bring a, a $32,000 increase for Deerfield. Um, well, right, because it's like 51% yes, of 50,000. To right? me, you're going to be billing out at an ALS level versus a basic level. So we would be generating enough evidence how much, revenue. But how many calls a year does A3 go on? Right. Um, or how many more calls could it go on if it were at ALS level? Or is it it's only, not. Is it only when there's an, you've got two out of But here's, here's the thing, remember. And we, we have a live motion, so I don't know what we need to yeah. do around well, that. Well, we're, no, we're still oh. discussing. Oh, we're still yeah, discussing. We're okay, discussing. that's fine. If a new ambulance is almost two years out. Yeah. And the life pack is almost two years out? Yeah. We're basically equipping a new ambulance with the new life pack. Uh, we're not looking to pay for it 
chances are if he gets this ordered in June, if we see it the following July, we'll be lucky. And if it comes in and, God forbid, we don't have the money or can't afford it, he calls a guy we can only afford to, he'll sell the third one to the next guy on the list. At a higher price. Yes. Um, so do you, can you break it over two years? In other words, uh, if you order the light packs now... Mm -hmm. The you motion is asking you to order the life pack now. I, but, but pay for it. Oh wait, order it now. Right. All right. Like in FY twenty three. Yes. Or or after, after do we need July, to get approval from three town meetings before we can order it? Yeah. What's no, a capital? Well, well, no, because is it considered capital? Well, it be is a capital. It is a capital item. But it's also, I mean, it's part of your operational equipment. So I think you have the ability to put in an order and just put it in under the capital improvement. Now, the question is, when do you have to pay for it? When do you have to put it in the budget? Well, the question is whether I'm buying it now in FY23 or I'm buying it in July FY24. 1st. July 1st would be FY24, and it would have to be in this budget. And then the question is, are we paying for it out of retained earnings and increasing the assessment of the towns if, by 50000 or are we just putting it in for a capital request? If you request? order it now, you're paying for it out of the excess revenue that we could be generating in... Um, Fiscal year twenty three. I, I don't I don't know. So we're not gonna get it in twenty three. You're not gonna no, see this thing. It until, won't be certified until the fall. You're not gonna get that also that truck does do calls, but we currently are only regularly staffing for two trucks and that is the third. Okay. So not necessarily gonna generate I, I don't it's not gonna pay for itself it's, in like a it's year not, or something. Hear me out. It's not the revenue it can generate. It's a potential to save lives. Yes, 100%. It's a $50,000 investment for the potential to save a life. Amortized over, what, 10 years? Over yes. 10 so it's years. a $5,000 a, 5, a year investment to save, you know, your neighbor's life. The frontier football hero at the 50-yard line who got hit in the chest and got commotio cordis and dropped like a rock. Mm -hmm. Um, not to mention if it goes on standby at DA or a craft fair or anywhere else. It generates more money. Well, it generates more money, but more important than the money, it gives the people working on that truck the ability to act I'm, at, I'm, 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 at the level they're trained I, to. I'm 100% for that. I'm just saying you can just justify it on just the revenue yep. stream. Yeah. Not the emotional... Yep save our neighbor kind of thing. So if we're intending to pay for it out of FY24, I can't put an order in until it clears town meeting. Right. Until the budget gets passed. Um, so yeah. April, May. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's trying to shoot their, um, it might be even June because everybody's trying to push their town meeting yep. further out. Um, so if you were going to get it, if you were going to put an order in now, it would be out of the, the current budget. And this would be an expense that you didn't anticipate? Is that what you're saying? Well, I would, uh, yeah, I mean, the question would be, I could order one today, but right. I would have to have $50,000 in the FY23 budget, and I don't have that money for, I don't, like, you have it in will we have $50,000, you know, when the dust settles in retained earnings? Sure. But... 60 of that needs to go to the ambulance replacement, right. you know, and we already know we can't afford the ambulance. <laughs> right, right. So. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know that without it being certified as retained earnings, like as, as revenue sitting there available, like I don't know that I can spend out of it. Mm -hmm. um, the money that we're receiving right now, we've already accounted for in the FY23 budget. Mm -hmm. To the tune of five hundred and seventy-five thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. And where are you on your? How much you've? How much have you received versus what you budgeted for? I think we're are you on like eighty-nine percent or seventy-two. Yeah, I think we're on track for like six hundred and seventy thousand dollars right now. Right. Um, and Medicare went up six and a six percent as of January first, right? right? So we'll have six months of that. Right. Um, 
So you're talking about more than a hundred thousand beyond what you budgeted for. Um, you budgeted for five seventy five. Yes. And you're on track to get six seventy five. Sure, but we need a hundred thousand dollars for the ambulance replacement. For the what? For the ambulance replacement. Right. Understood. The ambulance replacement. Yeah. The money that flows ahead in certified free cash. We would need to go to all three towns to transfer it out of certified free cash. No. Well, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Damn you, enterprise fund. <laughs> well, if if you're if you're going to use once free cash is certified, you go to town meeting and you decide how you want to spend it. Okay. You cannot spend it until it's certified. Right. It will. Our free cash will, normally doesn't get certified till September. So what's happening is because our budgets are so screwy in the spring, we used to only ever have a special town meeting in the fall once in a while. Mm -hmm. Now it's last couple of years, we're, it's guaranteed we're going to always have one because we have to fix our budget. And so when it's, we get our certified free cash, we schedule our meeting, I mean our town meeting, and we try to fix what we did not appropriately budget for mm -hmm. in the because it was too early, figures weren't in, like number of school kids, all that kind of stuff. Everything changes. Oh, that's fine. Do we, do we take the money out of the, the capital fund that we have now to pay for the three as of July 1, so you can order them, and then put that money back once we get our enterprise sense, certified? Or have you put in two in your budget, and we're only arguing about the 50000 for the plus for the third one. Did you already put in two for you know, to replace budget. the two life packs that are eight and eight plus years old? No, I'm only speaking of replacing one now. One so one. we would have a total of three. The newest one would go on our frontline truck. And, what and is then the we would start one? what's that? How old is the newest one? Well you, the one that one we would, would purchase. The oh, brand no. new okay. one. So but how, eight, the other two are eight years old. Okay. Right. So they need to be replaced in two years time anyway. Yeah. We, we honestly yes. should be ordering three. Okay. Because if there's no parts. <laughs> yeah. And it's oh, going right. to be yes, two right. years to build these things, we're sitting on a ticking time bomb. Yes, agreed. Short of going on eBay and scrounging to try to find somebody with a motherboard that we could buy. Um, I'm going to. Northampton Fire bought 20 with ARPA funds. What? 20 what? <laughs> Life packs with ARPA funds. 20? Something like that, yeah. Like double digits. Upwards, they replaced their entire fleet of life packs with ARPA funds. Just chunk, Have chunk, they chunk. got 20 vehicles to put but, them in? But, all our, the, but all North the fire Hampton, Northampton received millions and millions of dollars in ARPA funds. Yeah. The formula was not the same for us. None of our little towns got the same level of ARPA funding. Yeah, I, Everybody went out fair. and bought life packs with ARPA funds. That's why they're so backlogged okay. right now. Um, but anyway, sorry. That, I, that was a... Can we... Can we make the motion to take the 150 out of the capital line item to allow him to order these three life packs? I think we have to. It's, and it's, then it's, next year, after all this, the enterprise fund gets certified, we'll look at transferring that money back into the capital fund and then figure out what we need to do for the ambulance. I don't feel that we can responsibly wait to get on the, whip, the list for our replacement. Well, if both of them, if, if both of them are, are within two years of their usable life, yeah, um, we need, definitely need to order two of them this, this pretty much right now. And the third one, maybe you come back at special town meeting and say, now we need to order the third one in the anticipation of, or, you know, I, I honestly feel like if you're going to order two, you should just order yeah. three. Yeah, I agree. Um, and we just get in the queue, because mm -hmm. we're not going to have to pay for it for two years. I am not clear where this money is coming from, with, with this, this thing about it paying back. Right now, certified retained earnings, right. $542,054. We're saying, what Matt is saying, is you're going to take 150000 out. Of that, yep. Yeah to appropriate towards the purchase of, you're, we're not taking it out, we're actually just leaving it there. All you're doing 
is saying they're allocating this to, to this 150 expense. is being allocated towards the purchase of these life packs okay and you are going to order three of them right so, now today because that money is certified it's sitting there yeah okay. right and we have to it's a two-year waiting line for okay. and we have two years on the life span of our and then we're then we can't even run our ambulances okay as yeah. as la als ambulances so, they're going to go back to basic if we don't get these Equipment. So there's 542,054 available retained earnings, correct? Yes. We're going to apply 284,554 to our budgets. To the budget, correct? Um, yes. All right. Hang on a minute. You're doing the math on your calculator? Yep. Okay. Now, you're going to spend 7,500 on IV pumps. Yep. This 62.5 that yeah. we've put three of these in, is that part of that 542? Yes. Okay. So when you take when you take that out, what do we got left? Yeah, you got 150 to come out out of two. I have a hundred thousand dollars left. Yeah. So could we could we reappropriate some of that further retained for ambulance replacement? to pay for the life packs and then replenish that money after we get certified in the fall? Or do we even have to because these things aren't going to get delivered for well over a year? Uh, we don't have to do anything for, if, if, there's, if it's truly two years out for the life packs, two years out for the ambulance, it's, you just have to set aside the 150 so that you, you can't count it towards the ambulance if you were, if you're counting it towards the life pack. Okay. We're already short of for the ambulance. Right. We have not ordered that ambulance. So, and we've got to decide how we're going to fund the ambulance. So when we decide how we're going to fund the ambulance in after fiscal, you know, July 1st, then we as a boo group can say, okay, what we're going to do is, um, however the towns have decided to fund the ambulance, this is how we're going to, generate our ambulance fund back to that level whether it's moving it in Deerfield we might say we don't want it to come out of certified free cash we're going to do it raise an appropriate warrant article mm -hmm. in the fall okay. Sunderland might choose to do it through whatever basically what if, if we had to come back and pay for it we would be looking to pay about $75,000 for our portion of the three Right. If we did it out of something other than retained earnings, yeah, um, you know, and the the other thing is that you order two and one of them breaks, then one of your good ambulances yeah. is out of service as an ALS vehicle. Right. So having a third one in reserve means that you can guarantee that both of your good ambulances can function this way, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. while you're waiting to get your other thing repaired or whatever, so. It's, you know, I just can't believe that it's two years out to get this kind of equipment. Well, you were saying that the packs were less than that, right? Like a year and a half, a year, 18 months? Yeah, the, the packs, yeah, the life packs are like 18 months. The ambulances might be two years. Okay. That, that was the, yeah. But um, even still, if, yeah. if one of them craps the bed tomorrow right, and you exactly. can't get it fixed, you're still looking. Hopefully, we could work with like a Northampton and, hey, you know, could you hook us up with a solid and... Oh, you're sitting on 20 I mean, we of these. Would, yeah, Can right. we buy yeah, yeah. one from you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so out we're of the five... We're still going to have to pay the money, though. Yes. Yeah. Out of the 542, we're still putting 284000 and change to offset the budget. So that's still at that 1.9%. Right. The IV pumps for 7500 and then three life pack 15s for $150,000. Because this is certified retained earnings... I can order it tomorrow because that money is sitting there. Right. It is certified. It is available. We have it. Um, the question about whether this is a capital, like we got to push it. It is a it. capital, but it's also emergency um, replacement, regular operational equipment. So should I put in a capital request and be like, this is being paid for out of current retained earnings, blah, 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 for these reasons, it's an emergency, blah, blah, Okay. That leaves out of that 542, one hundred thousand okay. dollars, which would be still just sitting there available, and 
presumably for that ambulance replacement. Right. Now we went from being $110,000 short to $260,000 right. short for that ambulance. Right. But that's where, that's, that's where we're landing on it. I just want to make sure that I'm understanding. So, yeah. um, and I will still put in for a capital request for that ambulance with the understanding that like, you, look. What you should do is put in a capital request <coughs> that you are actually purchasing the three so that we can re we can put it on the schedule as a 2023 purchase. We would vote to approve. I will argue at the capital improvement committee meeting that it made no sense given the 18 month lead time and we only have two years left on the two ambulances that this is coming out of fiscal 23. So it goes, what happens is we update our fiscal 23 Got it. capital schedule, we'll put it in the life pack thing, we'll vote it retro, active, okay? Life packs, FY23, IV pumps, and the ambulance, FY24. Yeah. Got it. So after we figure out how we're going to pay for the ambulance, and you were saying this would this would um, not involve the the money that you're like this you were saying five seventy five but you're really on budget to get six seventy five. Um, it right whatever that money above and beyond would show up in retained earnings. Yeah. There down the road, there would be but, certified for the fall. Right. So in the fall, we might instead of having hundred thousand in retained earnings, we might have. Two hundred thousand, because oh, for sure we will yeah. have more than one hundred thousand. Right. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, and if I did, if I did my math, we'll probably yeah probably have around two hundred thousand, just yeah. shy maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll have made up really basically two thirds of what we were putting in for. for. Yeah. 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 And if we have to go back and say okay. Now we need to, you know, ask each of the communities to put in their portion to buy this third life pack because we need to. We got this ambulance coming. Yeah. You know, whatever we want to do. Yeah. But it, I think that's a good thing. So the motion to purchase, put in an order and purchase for three life pack fifteen replacements in the FY twenty three current budget with the certified retained earnings. Yeah. Available in the enterprise fund. And so. Matt made the motion. And I'll second it. Tim seconded it. We can't vote on it without someone being here, though. Sure you can. You just need a quorum. It's no. a quorum. You just need a quorum. Well, I thought you needed all three towns. Mm -hmm. You no. don't. That was a courtesy that was extended for a long period because people didn't want to actually just make a decision. They mm -hmm. wanted to keep putting it to the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah. need um, a quorum. You're the quorum. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want a quorum. Um, I'm just... Yeah. Uh, I make sure and I'm sure Tom would probably see it logically. I mean, I don't see anyone could see that this isn't the logical thing to do. I, yeah, no, I agree. You can and also base, these you can, life packs. You can support it for just economic reasons. Does this lock in the, the price when you order it? You're ordering it at a price. Yeah. And so, 18 months from now, when, yes. when the life pack is sixty thousand dollars, yes, we it is seem like rocket because, science. Because because Lori's been applying for the grant, she's got a current quote. Yeah. This is the thing at this price ordered today. Yeah, and, so, and yeah. hopefully, we get some grant money to help pay for this. Right, right. Potentially, yes. Potentially, potentially. we're going to get mm -hmm. grant money to offset the ambulance too. Yes, yeah. yeah. potentially. Um, well, Smith College got a couple million dollars, and what are they paying taxes a year to the federal government? I know everyone seems to be getting money, but our small towns. Yeah. It is it is a scandal. Yes, I agree. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we may end up paying ten thousand dollars a student to help pay off their college loads that they use to pay those institutions that don't pay any taxes. Uh, there's a motion on the floor, and it's been seconded. Okay. Um, any further discussion? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, three zero zero. Okay. Um, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Does somebody need to have a conversation with Tom to bring him in? Did we spend money tonight? Yeah. I can call. Okay. I'll um, call Tom. I just want to write that down as a to do. Okay. Can Bobby and Tom, if they're unclear, they can contact you and speak with you about it. 
uh, yeah, all, always. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can basically just say, look, you know, we're, we're going to need these two of these life hacks in 18 months, if not sooner. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Yeah. If you <laughs> if you like to vote for these things, you can. <laughs> well, I, yeah, but it doesn't. And, I, yeah. I mean, this is a serious to, to the point that was made. I, I don't want to do anything behind someone's back. Of course. Yes. And I yes. just want to make sure he's yeah. he's up to speed, he agrees, he and Bobby are aware of what we're doing, why we're doing it. Right. It's not... I feel comfortable it's not an immediate purchase. It's not something that he's going out tomorrow and by right. Friday I'm going to have three brand new shiny machines. No. This is because of the backlog and because of the delays. We the, want to get on the, the list. The lead time on this, having an 18-month yes. lead time, is very serious. And the fact that we've got equipment that can't be repaired is scary. And there's probably no no way that we could get an Inflation Reduction Act money for this kind of purchase. It doesn't cover a lot of this stuff. I, I'm not. It's not clear in my mind what the requirements are for the Inflation Re um, Reduction Act money. Had a grant writer. If we had a grant writer, if we had a grant writer. Well, Lori's getting really good at it. I'm. I'm. I mean, we got to make just make the sell to at the MMA that you know for our Selectmen's Association, our little four county group. We've got to make sure that we are saying we got to get our fair share. Right. We missed out on the ARPA money. Yeah. Well, I thought the state still had 1.75, but they probably allocated. It's all allocated to the eastern part of the state. Nothing has come out here. Orange got extra money for that when they had that big, terrible fire, right. and they're doing the cleanup. Right. Not even Springfield or anybody else got any additional money, hardly. Hmm. Nothing. Nothing out here. Did we, not, we all paid our taxes. Yeah. We missed the boat on the ARPA out here. Well, yeah, I, I made the point to Lieutenant Governor Driscoll uh, look, that we're 14% of the population. We should have gotten 14% of the federal dollars because we paid federal taxes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, quota system. Oh, well, we can't, you know. No. Don't give me a can't. You yeah. can. Basically, you have to have a political will that says this is fair. I think people in the East would understand why should the West get screwed so we can have another car on the MBTA. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just federal dollars coming back to the state is different than allocating, you know, Boston pays a lot more taxes than we mm -hmm. do. I get that. Uh, but this IRA money, the Inflation Reduction Act money, is coming into the state. We better damn well get our share. Yeah, it's, it's again a I'm, federal I'm, thing. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Well, they should make up for the ARPA money we didn't get before. before. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So it's craziness not to allocate mm -hmm. be on the list for something. Yeah, and you know, worse comes to worse. I don't know if anybody else has any ARPA funds left over, Sunderland and Waitley. Um, but we have another seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that we haven't decided how to spend. Well, we voted. And you we voted say 5%. you voted that, but see, I'm a new select board member, and I'm not going to recognize that vote because <laughs> well, things change. I know. We can re-vote the issue. There's no yeah. question. But we did vote to use it towards the 1888 building. Yeah, well, we have some other things that might help the 1888 building, which we're not at liberty to discuss, but... Yeah. Fair enough. Anything uh, else? Oh, my God. It's 8.30. You want more? No, I want to go home. Yeah, me too. Um, I think... <laughs> my um, wife is waiting for me. <laughs> That's it. Um, I've got the Sunderland uh, budget presentation meeting already scheduled for the 30th, still waiting for Deerfield and Waitley. Um, we'll get the capital and the budget disseminated to all three towns, so they'll have that in hand. We've got the upcoming boo meetings. Um, that's following the same pattern. We already, like, I've, that's, I'll just make sure that those are in the calendars. Um, and I think that's it for me, unless anybody had new business or anything that we hadn't discussed. No. If you could suggest some time when you have free to, when do we want to try and do this with, with Brenda? She's probably the limiting. Yeah, she's really busy, I know. Yeah. So should we bring it up with her? And Yeah, we should try to do it the first week or two of February, mm -hmm. if we can. Um, Monday through Friday during the day is great for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty flexible with enough lead time. Uh, I've got meetings scattered here and there, but um, 
if she's we'll got, ask, yeah. We'll ask Brenda what she has available for the next, in yeah. the beginning of February. And it could be super low stakes, just yeah. kind of putting the like parameters on what it is we're looking at. I, th what the I concern still is. think it's important for us to talk to Tom Scanlon ultimately. Mm -hmm. But maybe you mention that to Brenda that we need to understand, yeah. you know. Well, there aren't that many municipal um, ambulance services, so yeah. we can't be held to the same standard. Mm -hmm because well, of the way we're run versus a commercial. You want to talk like to Comstar and see what they, have they run into this before? Have they got any suggestions? Or? I, I'll certainly ask them. I kind of want to find out what the concern is because depending that's on right. what that answer is might dictate what Comstar yes, says. Yes, I actually think yeah. that's smart. Because um, we but I think, but like right, all the fire departments out there that do billing and stuff like that, like they have the same problem. Yeah, but Granted, it won't be an enterprise fund, but they would have similar um, billing stuff, I would think. Um, yeah, but if they, if they might be, because it's part of a town department, then they can just write off stuff regularly. Or maybe they're writing it <coughs> monthly. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know I'll how make a motion to, to we'll figure adjourn. this out later. Figure this out later. I'll okay. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right.